Most people think of vitamin C as a safe and harmless supplement. After all, it's water soluble, right? That means you just pee out the extra. So how could you possibly overdose? Well, that's the theory, but the reality is a little more complicated. Even though it is true that your body doesn't store vitamin C in fat like it does with the fat-soluble vitamins A, D, E, and K, that doesn't mean you can take as much as you want without any consequences. Yes, excess vitamin C is flushed out through your urine, but it still interacts with your tissues and other nutrients on the way through. And depending on the dose, that can cause some very uncomfortable side effects and even disrupt your nutrient balance over time. So in this video, I want to talk about what exactly happens when you overdose on vitamin C. To start off, let's first talk about what even counts as a high dose. The recommended daily intake for adults is 90 mg per day for men and 75 mg per day for women, which is very low because it refers to how much you need to avoid serious vitamin C depletion, so scurvy. Many supplements come in doses of 500 up to 1000 mg per serving. And I would say anything over 1,000 milligrams per day would be considered high. The range between 500 and 1,000 is kind of a gray area. So it depends a lot on how your body responds to it and what you're trying to achieve. Now, let me say that short-term high vitamin C intake usually isn't a problem. So don't feel bad if you're sick and taking a lot for a few days. Really, the only thing that could happen is stomach upset. Vitamin C in its isolated form, so ascorbic acid, is, well, acidic. Take too much at once and you're blasting your stomach and intestine with a strong acid. This can lead to cramps and diarrhea. This usually starts to happen at doses of around 2000 mg or more if you take them all at once. Obviously, the vitamin C doesn't just disappear once it hits your stomach. It will travel all the way through to your gut and if you've taken too much, it can irritate everything along the way. That's why the bathroom emergency is one of the most common side effects of an acute vitamin C overdose. There are ways to avoid this though. For example, buffered vitamin C supplements combine ascorbic acid with alkaline minerals like calcium or magnesium. This will help neutralize the acid and makes the supplement easier on your stomach. Whole food vitamin C supplements made from acerola cherries, for example, also tend to be gentler for the same reason. They're not just pure acid. Now, what happens when you take very high doses of vitamin C for longer periods of time? So weeks, months, or maybe even years? It really depends. Some people do fine on it and follow high dose vitamin C protocols for years without any problems, but others completely crash. So let me explain what's going on inside your body when this happens. You see, high dose vitamin C interacts with your mineral balance especially sodium and copper. When you take a lot of vitamin C, it stimulates your adrenal glands. These glands are involved in managing stress and they store a lot of vitamin C naturally. So giving them more will temporarily boost their activity. That's why people feel more alert or energized when they first start taking vitamin C supplements or other compounds that include vitamin C, like the adrenal cocktail, for example. But the more your adrenals work, the more aldosterone it will pump out which raises sodium. In normal doses, we use this to our advantage to treat sluggish adrenals, but in high doses, it can be too much. You might feel tired but wired, or on edge all the time, where your brain is racing, but your body is exhausted. That's a classic sign that your adrenals are being overstimulated and a good signal to cut back on your vitamin C intake. Another issue can be copper. High dose vitamin C, especially in its isolated form, acts as a copper chelator. That means it binds to copper and helps remove it from your body. This can be helpful if you have too much excess copper that needs to go out, but if your copper is already low, it can cause more harm than good. Copper is involved in energy production, neurotransmitter balance, and immune function. So messing with it can lead to all kinds of symptoms related to these functions. One of the enzymes most affected here is ceruloplasmin. It's a protein that binds and transports copper in your blood. Studies have shown that high doses of isolated ascorbic acid can lower ceruloplasmin levels. For example, one study showed a significant reduction after six weeks of taking 1000 milligrams of vitamin C. So even if your total copper looks good on paper, you will not be using it properly because you can potentially tank your ceruloplasmin levels. Another concern some people bring up is kidney stones. 
Vitamin C increases oxalate levels in the urine, which can lead to calcium oxalate kidney stones. The science on this is mixed. Some studies support it, others say it's not a real risk unless you're already prone to kidney stones in the first place. I've definitely seen a few people who reported this after taking high dose vitamin C. So even if the studies are inconclusive, I would keep this in mind if you already have existing kidney problems. Great, the takeaway of this video is that even though vitamin C is super important and less likely to cause side effects because it can be peed out, that doesn't mean a very high dose won't cause any symptoms. Again, this mostly applies to long-term high doses and not just a few days where higher doses can definitely help you recover from a cold quicker. Also keep in mind that much of this video was based around isolated ascorbic acid supplements and not whole food vitamin C, which does behave somewhat differently because it also includes other phytonutrients and enzymes. In the end, listen to your body and adjust your dosage based on how you feel and don't fall for the myth that it's impossible to take too much.